In this short video, let's focus on the p-value approach in hypothesis testing. This approach is presented to us as an alternative to the critical value approach and what we'll try and do through very simple math is to try and convince ourselves that the two approaches, the p-value approach and the critical value approach are actually equivalent. We know they are equivalent, we know they, they lead us to the same results, but instead of perceiving and understanding them as two very radically different approaches, the aim here is to understand how the two approaches are so closely linked to one another. So let's begin. Let me write down the topic. So this video is on the p-value approach. Let's begin with the notation first. The notation which I'll be needing is this. First, I need t to be my random test statistic. I'll stick with this convention of using uppercase letters for random variables and lowercase for actual realizations. Then let's assume that for the given sample I'm working with, the value of the test statistic that I came up with was t actual. Then let's assume that tc denotes a critical value. In case it's a two-tailed test, then I'll have two critical values. Let's call them as tc lower tc upper. Okay. Then I'll also need the chosen level of significance alpha and I'll also need the CDF of my test statistic T. Remember, it's a random variable. I'm assuming here that I know its distribution and I am assuming that the distribution is specified to me in the form of a CDF. Okay. In the p-value approach, my decision rule is actually very simple. It just says that once I have computed the p-value, if the p-value is less than, let me say less than equal to alpha, the chosen level of significance, then this leads me to the reject decision. I reject my null hypothesis. On the other hand, if p-value comes out to be greater than alpha, then this is do not reject. Okay, now this was a very simple decision rule. The, the intricacy of this decision rule lies not in the final reject versus don't reject statements, but it lies in the computation of p-value. So the p-value, how is it computed? As a recap, the p-value is the probability of you observing a test statistic which is worse than what you have just observed. I called that number as t actual in the direction of the alternate hypothesis. So it means that if I am running a left tailed test, okay, this is a test in which the evidence to reject the null hypothesis lies in the left tail and therefore the worst value of t as compared to what you have observed will be one which is less than what you have observed. Remember, it's the left tail. So therefore, I would write the p-value as the probability that the t that you observe will be worse than the t actual and in this case, worse means to the left of. Okay. If on the other hand, it's a right tailed test. Okay. Then in a right tailed test, I'll compute my p-value to be equal to the probability that I'll get a worse outcome for t in the direction of the alternate, which in this case means t is greater than t actual. Okay. So this is for my left tailed, this is for my right tailed. What is the p-value for my two tailed test? So this comes across as a bit tricky. This p-value will be the probability that I observe a value of my test statistic, which is, let's say, less than, that means in the left tail, of the minus of the absolute value of t actual. So this will take care of both cases, if t actual is positive or negative, okay? Plus, I would also need to include in this the probability that my test statistic is to the right of the absolute value of my t actual. Okay, this is my p value in the case of a two tailed test. Now, once I have the p value, as I just said, if this p value is less than or equal to alpha, I'll reject. 
Now let's do this. Let's try and analyze this guy, the right tail test for an example, okay? So what I'll do is to establish the equivalence of the critical value approach and the p-value approach. Let's start with the decision rule for critical value and see if we can, let's say, juggle things around and finally arrive at the decision rule for the p-value approach. Then we've established the equivalence of the two approaches. So let's begin with the decision rule of right-tailed test in the case of critical values. That decision rule tells me if what I observe, that means T actual, is greater than the T critical, then it means that's the case in which I'll reject the null. Okay, as simple as that. Now, let's do this. Let's write down T critical. What is T critical in the case of a right-tailed test? It is that value which has been picked from the distribution of the test statistic which leaves an area alpha to its right. I want the entire alpha in the right tail. Let me do that picking of the right critical value using the distribution which is given to me via the CDF. One thing which I missed, I'm also assuming that along with the CDF, I also know the inverse CDF, okay? That means inverse would tell me, you give me the probability, the inverse will give me that number of the test statistic which has this much of probability to its left, okay? So in the right-tailed test, what is my T critical? This number would very simply be F inverse of one minus alpha, okay? Because I need my critical value to be a number which leaves an area alpha in the tail and it means it leaves an area one minus alpha towards its left. And that number as per the definition of inverse CDF is F inverse of one minus alpha. So my inequality here for my decision rule becomes T actual is greater than F inverse of one minus alpha. Take F on both sides. That means take the F of T actual that should be greater than f of f inverse 1 minus alpha and this tells me because f and f inverse are inverses of one another the right hand side is basically 1 minus alpha okay now do this take the this guy on that side this guy on this side so it becomes 1 minus f of t actual is less than alpha which means that 1 minus the probability of my random t statistic being less than t actual. I have basically just used the definition of what the CDF is, is less than alpha. 1 minus probability of t less than t actual is basically the probability of t being greater than t actual. Okay, this is less than alpha. Go up and check. This is what we had written down as the condition of the p-value, the definition of p-value, and it tells me that p-value is less than alpha. So we started with the decision rule for the right-tailed test in the critical value approach, and what we've arrived at is the decision rule for a right-tailed test in the p-value approach. So that tells us with some very simple math that the two approaches are actually equivalent, okay? Now, let's try the two-sided test. What I'll do is that I'll leave the left-tailed test as an exercise for you. So for a two-tailed test, I'll have to work with two cases. Let me assume that case one is one in which the T actual that I have observed is a positive number, okay? If it's positive, what I can do is I can write down my condition in the critical value approach as something like this. I will reject my null if the T actual is greater than the T critical upper, okay? Because I already know my T actual is positive. The only way I will reject this two-sided hypothesis is if this T actual is to the right of the upper or the right-hand side critical value. Now, what is this right-hand side critical value? This critical value in a two-sided test is one which leaves an area alpha by two 
in the right tail, not alpha. A one-sided test leaves an area alpha. So this tells me that this will be the same as T actual is greater than this guy. If you were to pick it from the inverse CDF of the test statistic T is basically F inverse 1 minus alpha by 2. Remember, I need to have alpha by 2 in the right tail and hence 1 minus alpha by 2 towards its left. Okay, Take an F on both sides. So this tells me F of T actual should be greater than F of F inverse 1 minus alpha by 2. Okay, F and F inverse, if they are inverses of one another, will finally give you 1 minus alpha by 2. So this tells me f of t actual is greater than 1 minus alpha by 2. If you were to move things around, it tells me that 1 minus f of t actual is less than alpha by 2. Okay. So what is 1 minus f of t actual? Now you should be able to write this down quickly as this is the probability of t being greater than t actual okay this i am saying is less than alpha by 2 multiply 2 on both sides you get 2 times the probability of this happening is equal to alpha on the right hand side now this guy i am now imposing an assumption on the distribution of t and i am imposing this assumption that it is a symmetric distribution so this two times probability of this first i'll write it as probability of t being greater than t actual plus the probability of t being greater than t actual i've just split it into two this should be less than alpha since the distribution of t is symmetrical this probability i can also estimate it to be the probability of t lying to the left of minus t actual this purely comes from the fact that t has a symmetric distribution okay so i'll have this plus the probability that t is greater than t actual this is less than alpha now since the t actual was positive it doesn't harm if i put an absolute sign around it like this okay now this was my case one i leave that as an exercise for you to work out the same logic for the case when t actual is negative all that you have to do is you will have to start like this you will have to say that my decision rule reads something like this t actual which is negative i am saying should be to the left of my t critical which is on the left hand side since t actual is negative let's work with this value it's minus of the absolute of value of t actual it always keeps reminding us that we are working with a negative t actual let me write it down so this will be t actual less than zero okay so i'm saying this is less than t critical left what will that be it will be the f inverse of basically alpha by 2 because i know my left tail or my left critical value is one which leaves an area alpha by 2 in the left tail okay now from this point onwards you have to do the same procedure that we've done in the previous two cases and eventually you will arrive at this conclusion this conclusion is the same as what we wrote down here see so we wrote down that for the case of a two-sided test the p-value is given by this expression and this is exactly that what we are getting here so that means i can write it as p-value should be less than alpha so what we've done is in this short video we have used some basic concepts that we learned in the probability chapter we learned in the distributions chapter and we have applied them to establishing the equivalence of the two approaches for making a decision in a hypothesis test the critical value approach and the p-value approach